So on this international, we will be doing some rear brakes, pads, and rotors. Um, complete adjustment on the wheel bearing. Starting out with a 33 millimeter socket. So this repair was done as a emergency for a plow service that was required to salt hospitals. So this is not the most professional way and it was 14 degrees outside. We were very limited with what we were able to do, but I just wanted to make sure everyone was going to be able to be safe on the road and the hospitals were able to get the salt they needed. From this clip you can kind of tell that the rotor itself actually imploded and there was nothing left. I believe this is a 25 millimeter socket to take the axle bolts out. So go ahead and take those out, drain your axle, make sure your truck is secure, obviously do that before this. Right here you can tell I'm trying to knock out this uh, retainer clip pins and uh, the fingers that hold it on. Finally got that off, took a little See break, and I'm going for this outer nut. Kind of got. This is a eight sided three and a half inch uh, axle nut that comes off pretty easy. Once you pull those off in order, make sure you set them aside in a clean area and then you can pull the hub off with a friend. This is what was left of the rotor. Always make sure to clean up the spindle the best you can and then I like to use some lady slippers to pop that seal out. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. After removing the seal, I always do my best to clean up and uh, make sure that there's no foreign material in there when installing the new bearing and seal. So right here I'm using a 21 millimeter ratcheting wrench to try and get these uh, caliper bolts. The one by the spring hanger is really low clearance, but um, like I said, wrench you can do it. Ratcheting makes it 100 times easier. Uh, just taking the caliper off right here. As you can tell, there's less than nothing left of that inside pad. There's a little pad left on the outside, but they're in pretty terrible shape compared to what the new pads look like. Right here, I'm picking out. Right here, this is a 12.10 millimeter sock. You really have to make sure it gets in there. In my case, there was a bunch of uh, smoo in there from the brakes getting ground down. Uh, this bracket comes right off to get the rotor off. I didn't have to take that off because the rotor came off in pieces, but to get it back on, you definitely have to take this bracket off. Uh, it should come right off. Actually, they weren't too tight for me. Definitely get a, a friend to help you put this hub up. Make sure you don't damage the inside seal and just continue to push it on gently.
Here you can see me installing the bearing and the first uh, nut. As you tighten this up, you're going to want to spin the hub to make sure it's not uh, locking up on one particular spot. And make sure you're not binding up on anything stupid. It will uh, you know, either damage your bearing or crush it in a bad way. Back it off a little bit and then retort again. We used a dial indicator run out gauge and made sure that the tolerances were within spec. I believe it's between two and five thousandths of play is acceptable. You do not want less than two because then obviously you'll burn your bearings out. And go ahead and install the last nut and then torque that to spec. So do we check how it spins? Yeah. I bet you it spins fine. Oh, that spins real good. See, it like binds up. I need one of these pry bars. I don't know if I want to spend the money on Matco ones. Though. Those are really nice. After you get final torque of the lock nut, you can go ahead and bend these tabs back. For this is a smaller axle, so Matt was having a pretty difficult time getting those tabs bent back. It doesn't help that it was 14 degrees out and 1 a.m. at this point. But we were doing everything we could to make this repair happen. This is a Dana Axle, I think. Is it? I really don't know. It's actually not a clean truss. It doesn't look bad. I, I just set, make sure your axle oil is at the right level. Yeah. Put your wheels, all that shit back on, you'll be done. Yeah. Then, and obviously this will be back installed. Um, tilt it, like jack that side up. Set it on like, like, I tilt it pretty far. Yeah. Because you want the oil to slide down the axle tube out of here and fill the hub. So I tilt can just it. shoot it in there, right? You can shoot it in there. You can, you can, uh, like put the axle in like this. Because this is your drain hole. This should be a drain. This was a bolt, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, then th you could fill it through here until oh, okay. you fill the cavity. You just want to make sure there's oil in there, otherwise it'll lock up. So I could put, very, the, very I could put the axle in there. Leave this bolt out. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. And good. then fill it. Well, why don't I do that right now? Let's do it. And then... Is it an O-ring seal or a gasket seal? I found some rear diff slash gear axle sealer that I was able to use on a Permatex brand. And that worked out great. This is six months after the video was made. The truck has no leaks, so I can definitely say that that was the right stuff to use. Go ahead and reinstall and everything, and then said, hey, your truck's sorry, ready to go. Thanks for watching.